Welcome this afternoon. I've been playing with paint, but I learned today that in the 1600s, Isaac Newton was the one that kind of looked at color in the sky and looked at the rainbow and divided it up into colors and gave them names. And he gave them seven names and they were red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. So when I was a kid, I learned the R for red, O for orange, Y for yellow, G for green, B for blue, I for indigo, and V for violet to be Roy G. Biv. So just an imaginary person who made up the colors of the rainbow, I learned that um, this person or this man, Roy G. Bibb, had all the colors of the rainbow. And that helped me remember them in the order that they come in the sky when we see the color, when we see the light refracted. Did you know that light, sunlight, comes in all these different colors, we just don't always see them. And it takes like special water droplets in the air and that's what makes the, and a certain angle, and the sunlight comes through those water droplets and at an angle and that's where that beautiful sunlight gets refracted into all these different, separated into all these different colors. And I think it's pretty special. So we can paint one if you like. How many of you have watercolors at home or um, watercolor pencils? Let me show you a few of the things that I have and we can play with them. If you want to have your parents message me or you can message me, moms and dads, um, let me know what kind of art supplies you have and that would be fabulous. Um, I'd love to help create some um, videos for you here and on YouTube to um, help beat these times when we are all uh, inside a little bit more and home a little bit more. <laughs> and um, so anyways, I'd be happy to do that. So just let me know what kind of art supplies you have at home and what you'd like to learn and I'll create some videos. So I have recently launched a membership group. If you want to do a live paint and sip with me, I have a um, information about that on my website, Cami Renee Fine Art. So that's all out of the way. Let me show you some toys. How many of you are familiar with this? This is a great way to paint with watercolors. The way I like to get started with these is drop a little bit of water into each into each one while, uh, and let it sit while I'm getting my supplies ready. So I'm just dripping into, so that gets the, gets the watercolors woken up and they'll be rich and ready to use when I'm ready for them. So I just drop a droplet of paint right into each one and that'll be ready to use in a minute. Uh, watercolor pencils. These are also fun so you can draw or color with them and they um, and then you use a brush dipped in water or one of these special brushes that you can fill up the tank with water. So this part unscrews and then you fill up the tank with water and you can put this um, and squeeze water out of it as you paint. So that can be another way that you don't have to keep dipping all the time with water. It's kind of fun. Um, watercolor pencils. Oh, I have wa watercolor twist up crayons. What brand is this? This is Rose Art brand. These were super fun. So I just did a rainbow and we'll do a rainbow with these today and we'll do a look watercolor rainbow with tubes of paint. So these work just like 
these do. Same stuff, except these, you can make a little bit stronger colors because they're, they come out kind of liquidy already into your palette. And so I uh, was playing around with these a little bit earlier today. So we'll start with those and uh, we'll do a rainbow, okay? So, do you guys know that, we, we talked about this light thing, so sunlight comes in all these different colors and more colors. These are the colors that we can see, but there's more light waves that are on either side of this spectrum is what it's called and more than our eyes can even see. It's pretty amazing. Um, so, but we will talk about these colors for a minute and let's play with mixing them. And to get a piece of watercolor paper out. So, watercolor paper. Let's play with mixing the the primary colors for a minute, okay? I'm gonna make what's called a color wheel and then we'll do a rainbow. All right, I'm gonna move this down so you can see what I'm doing. So, I have lemon yellow here. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. So I could let this dry when I'm done painting today and then just get them a little bit wet to paint tomorrow also. So I don't have to wash this clean every time I use it. I could leave it, let it dry like this, and then these watercolors just wake them up with paint. This must not be the yellow I got out because it's hard to open. You guys, have, I have a trick for opening these little metal tubes without destroying them too much. These pliers have a grippy thing right in the center and it's lid shaped. So I can grip onto the lid pretty well and then open the tube without destroying it, which is helpful. But it's not helpful when you open the, right, the wrong color. So, I bet you it was this one, yay! So I'm mixing two yellows. I've got a, a, it's called deep yellow and lemon yellow. So I have two different yellows in there that I'm mixing up. Um, and then I was playing it with color theory. So there's two different theories in color. So we learned, I learned primaries as, here's the classic, um, red, yellow, and blue. And so when you mix red and blue together, you get purple. When you mix blue and yellow together, you get green. And when you mix red and yellow together, you get orange. But there's a more modern color theory out now, and they use magenta instead of red. And it's, they still blend beautifully. So these two color wheels were done, this one with magenta and this one with red but they still make magenta and yellow make orange, magenta and blue make purple. They're just, I think they're a little bit more vivid. I like the purple a little bit better, but um, I like this because sometimes it's really hard to get a beautiful pink color, a, a really nice um, vivid violet, just like in our rainbow, it's hard to get that vivid violet without a, a magenta. So that's what I was playing with earlier. So we were talking about the colors of the rainbow, but they also apply. We've got a rainbow right here, don't we? In our color wheel. So there's so many things we can learn about the color wheel. So just like these, these would be ready to use right now. These paints that I squeezed out of the tube, I get them, water them down and use them. So you can tell probably that that's my magenta. And 
and then I'm going to wash my brush. So I like to paint with a jar of soapy water and I pretend that I'm painting the bottom of the jar pretty vigorously. And then I rinse it in plain water. And then I pat it dry on a washcloth that I have taken over to be a paint rag. So it's kind of dirty, but this is um, my paint rag now. And it works a little bit better than a paper towel, but if you have paper towels and that's what you need to use, that's fine too. So I'm gonna do a yellow. I'm gonna wash my brush. Do a blue. So I was playing, I already, I still have blue on my brush, so I'm going to go ahead and make a little spot on my palette and put some blue and some magenta pink. I've been playing with paint today for a little bit. Getting ready for you guys. All right, so the blue and the magenta make a lovely purple. I'm gonna wash my brush. If I didn't wash my brush, the colors would get muddy looking. So, a little bit of yellow, mixing it in with my blue. There's green. magenta to, again to mix with yellow. Usually I start with yellow because it's magenta and red are very very powerful so I, it's easy to overpower the yellow. See just a lot less magenta than yellow went in that and it's really strong which is beautiful. So you see pretty easily we can make a rainbow with all of these colors. Just with these three colors we can make a rainbow, right? So, but we don't have to if we have all the right colors. So, what was the order again? Red, orange, yellow for Roy, G, Biv. Well, I just have blue and purple or blue and violet, but I'll add a little bit, I'll mix these two for indigo. And that's what indigo is. It's a mix of blue and purple together. And then I'll usually put a little bit of red on the other side of my violet because that's how the color spectrum works. It, it keeps on repeating a little bit. Um, okay, let's get some more paper out. Playing with paint makes me so happy. Okay, should we do a little bit of a blue background first? I'm thinking yes. Okay, so watercolors, true to its name, we like lots and lots of water with our watercolors. So this is a very special paint chewed on by my cat Panda. I don't know if you can see the holes through the edges. She hops up on my art table and she um, chews on styrofoam if I leave any of these plates out. 
So thankfully the center isn't destroyed, so I'm going to put some water on my plate. These are really, really handy, by the way, little spray bottles, um, because it's easy to overpower um, the paper with watercolor. If you want it to blend, it needs to be really, really watery, and the and the um, paper should be wet first. So I'm watering that lovely blue down. We're going to make a beautiful sky color. I'm going to leave a little bit of a band where the rainbow is going to go. I'm going to leave the very center of the band where the yellow is because we know that watercolors, you see through them to the bottom layer. And what if I did the whole paper blue first and then I wanted a really bright yellow, what color would I see through? I'd see through the yellow to get to the blue. These two colors would mix and I would get a green band in the, it would be light green, but I wouldn't want that. So I'm gonna get my paper wet, but I'm going to avoid a little bit where I think the yellow is going to go. So, watercolor brushes. So let me tell you, the Crayola brand brushes are great. I use them with my watercolors. But I also have just plain, um, a nice brush set that I use with my acrylic paints. They work great as well. The point with watercolor brushes is that you want them to hold a lot of water. This tool is fabulous and it is like a little mop and it mops up and spreads. It holds a lot of water and it spreads a lot of water onto your paper. It's great for blending and it's fabulous. One of my favorite tools. They're kind of expensive though, so if you don't um, take good care of your brushes, you may not want one. Look, I just spread that on the wet paper. Watch. It just blends. I could blend it with my finger because it's so, uh, the paper, I got wet. We're just creating a nice background. We can add and layer more color into it if we want to, but we're just adding some color onto our wet paper here. All right, so I wanted to show you. Now I'm just gonna get this wet. I wanted to show you these watercolor crayons. They're so fun and so colorful. So I'm going to get my primaries out and play with the primaries. Here's my red. I'm leaving a space and I'm doing my yellow because that's where the orange would be, right? Blue. love how vivid these are. Now I'm going to put the tiniest little bit of red on this side because we want it to make purple. So, now I can go through and I can do these colors fairly close to each other and just blend them. And just blending them will create the, the secondary color, which in this case would be orange. But since we have them, we'll go ahead and put these in here.
Now, I could leave it like this, but kind of, it's kind of magical when we blend it. So, clean brush, water, oh, not clean because I was just playing with the red and the yellow. Okay, clean brush, it's not, it's wet but it's not dripping. Now I'm going to paint stripes. I'm going to keep it in the stripes. If I wiggle my brush too much, it will blend the colors a whole lot and I don't want to blend a whole lot. Okay, now I'm gonna wash my brush. See how that blended everything together? It made it so cool. Okay, same idea. Starting here in a stripe that isn't blended yet. But I'm keeping my brush going in the arc of the rainbow. And it blended it! So fun! I'm washing my brush each time so I don't make mud. Is that red bothering any of you? Can you guys see that red? I'm gonna put a little bit more blue on there. Doesn't bother me, but. How fun. So now I'm gonna wash my brush again. I like to have the rainbow kind of fade in and blend into the sky a little bit. So this is a clean brush and I'm gonna water down that edge and blend it into my blue sky a little bit. Same thing on this side, so it kind of blends. There you go, what do you guys think? It's so colorful and vivid. And so this was with the watercolor crayons by Rose Art. Those are really, really fun. So I wanted to show you a painting that I did with watercolor. Here is watercolor. So I got the paper all very, very wet and I just touched it in certain areas for the blue sky and blended it around a little bit and I left big patches of white. Lots and lots of water, not a lot of paint. And then after that, I left, I, I went over with, while it was still very, very wet, I did some stripes of some green in a palm tree area and then I let the whole thing dry. And then when, after it was almost dry, I went back in with a little bit of gray and drew some lines to make it look like a palm tree. And it's very, very simple, easy, and kind of a loose painting. I'm so excited to have this time with you guys because I want to help you with your art projects and help you make this time that we are, are everything is a, a little bit different right now. If I can help you with being creative and learning how to play, do some art projects, I would love to do that. So please message me with or send me a picture of the art supplies that you have and let's create some fun and beautiful things out of this time that we have. So I will be back next week and we'll um, create new projects together. If you all want more ideas or need, would like to see more videos of how to do things, and I would love to have you or your parents subscribe. That would be fabulous. Please send me photos of your work. I would love to see what you're creating. Bye.